no maze or labyrinth in history, in myths, or in the entire world could ever beat the complexity of a human body. From cells to tissues, tissues to organs, organs to systems. Basically, we humans won't be living if we don't have these systems that work in perfect synergy for the full function of a human body. <laughs> Probably a significant one, if not the most important one, is the nervous system, which is responsible for controlling the actions and sensations of all the parts of the human body, as well as your thoughts, your emotions, and your memory. The most basic and important part in the usefulness of the nervous system is the neuron. The neuron is the functional unit of the nervous system consisting of 100 billion neurons in one human brain alone. While they vary in size and shape, all neurons have three identical parts that enable them to function. The axon, the dendrites, and the cell body. The nervous system is divided into two. The central nervous system controls the voluntary functions like walking, laughing, reading, and the other. The peripheral nervous system or the PNS is responsible for the involuntary actions like blinking of an eye, the heartbeat, and the digestion of food. Among the diseases of nervous system, the most common difficulty that people have is pain and much of that is nerve-related. Epilepsy, in which abnormal electrical discharges from brain cells cause seizures. <laughs> Amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS. <laughs> The Lou Gehrig's disease, a motor neuron disease which weakens the muscles and progressively hampers physical function. Alzheimer's disease. which covers a wide range of disorders that impacts mental functions, particularly memory. There are 100 million people who live with chronic pain. Without hormones and glands, there will be no regulation in our body and it is impossible for us to grow. And so one should give thanks to this certain part of the body, the endocrine system. In addition to nervous system, this system also helps in coordinating the activities in the human body. The endocrine glands present are the following. Pituitary gland, thyroid, parathyroid, thymus, pancreas, adrenal glands, testes in males and ovaries in females, each having specific function, hormones, and position. The Chinese traditional healers extracted the sex and pituitary hormones from the human urine with the help of the sulfate material gypsum and the chemical compound saponin. They use these hormones for medicinal purposes. Hippocrates, the ancient Greek physician and the father of medicine, was the first to diagnose diabetes mellitus. Surprisingly, his technique involved the tasting of the urine of his patients to a distinct sweetness. Today, Vices and unhealthy diet, such as alcoholic consumptions, are usually almost every day done by most people without knowing that these will bring consequences to their endocrine systems. Humanity won't exist at all if it weren't for reproduction. The reproductive system is one of the most vital systems because it determines whether a species will survive. The reproductive system produces human offspring. 
However, without much knowledge of the reproductive system and its importance, people go the wrong way and tend to be infected with various diseases. One prevalent example, especially in the Philippines, is the Acquired Immune Deficiency Syndrome. It's a serious disease caused by a virus that destroys the body's natural protection from infection. Why do some have almond-shaped eyes, others have round? Why are some yellow, some white, some dark skin color, not necessarily following their family's color? Why do some have short height? Well, some are really tall. Well, it's all about the magic of genetics. Building a house requires a blueprint or a plan of the structure of the house to determine how it would look like after construction. Organisms have blueprints which contain information that will determine their physical and chemical characteristics. This blueprint is called DNA. The DNA or the deoxyribonucleic acid holds the instructions for an organism's or each cell's development and reproduction and ultimately death. Just last December 28, 2017, a conference was held in Nargus Occidental attended by aspiring student doctors to know more about genetics. It was led by Michael Benjamin Ramirez Jr. PhD, the son of Michael Benjamin Ramirez Sr. PhD. So good evening everyone. We will now talk about genetics and heredity. Translation, transcription, and replication are important processes in protein synthesis and if one small unwanted tweak happens along the way, especially in genetic coding, mutation occurs. Questions? Uh, Dr. Ramirez, good evening. So can you tell us more about the Down syndrome? Down syndrome is usually caused by an extra copy of chromosome 21. Characteristics include decreased muscle tone, stockier build, asymmetrical skull, slanting eyes, and mild to moderate mental retardation. Another question? Um, sir, sir, what about Edward syndrome? Edward syndrome, which is the second most common trisomy after Down syndrome, is a trisomy trisomy of chromosome 18. Symptoms include mental and motor retardation and numerous congenital anomalies causing serious health problems. They have a characteristic hand appearance with clenched hands and overlapping fingers. Dr. Ramirez, can you tell us something about Jacobson syndrome? Jacobson syndrome is also called terminal 11q deletion disorder. This is a very rare disorder. Doc Mai, can you please explain further the Turner's Syndrome? Turner's Syndrome, X instead of XX or XY. Female sexual characteristics are present but underdeveloped. Thank you and good evening once again. In the end, it is important to understand that these people, though different to the eyes, are still part of the society. They're still humans after all, though with one less chromosome. Do you know why dinosaurs no longer exist today? Why some animals before are very different from the animals we have now? Evolution is a change in the characteristics of a species over several generations and relies on the process of natural selection. Fossils are examples of evidences that paleontologists use in studying evolution. They are traces of organisms that lived in the past and were preserved by natural process or catastrophic events. Another type of fossil is an imprint or impression. Imprints are shallow external molds left by animal or plant tissues with little or no organic materials present. Another hint of evolutionary concept is from the comparative anatomy. Structures from different species which have similar internal framework, position, and embryonic development are considered to be homologous. Structures of unrelated species may evolve to a look alike because the structure is adapted to similar function. 
These are called analogous structures. Ancestral population into two or more subpopulations that are geographically isolated from one another. Convergence is an increase in similarities among species derived from different ancestors as a result of similar adaptation to similar environment. Biodiversity benefits people in many ways. It can be of economic, ecological, or aesthetic value. Greater biodiversity promotes a more stable ecosystem. The more recent loss of biodiversity has been attributed primarily to human activities such as overfishing, overhunting, and loss of habitat. Population growth gives us an idea on how fast a population changes over time. Population growth can be affected by density-dependent or density-independent limiting factors. Changes in the habitat may cause an increase or decrease in biodiversity. The Philippines is considered a mega-diversity country. The country hosts more than 52,177 described species of which more than half is found nowhere else in the world. However, the country is also considered a biodiversity hotspot. This is because the Philippines continues to experience an alarming rate of destruction of these important resources brought about by deforestation, land degradation, climate change, and pollution. Humans are obliged to take responsibility in maintaining a clean and healthy state of the ecosystem. After all, we have one Earth, we have one planet, and we have one home. God has made indeed a very complex yet marvelous creation. It is us humans. From every little detail, from the tiniest cell to the largest organ, everything functions uniquely yet significantly. We all need to realize the importance of our nervous, endocrine, and reproductive systems as to avoid damaging them and our overall well-being. With the knowledge of heredity, we will come to realize that there is no other you in this world. You are intricately made and you need to value yourself and others. Having a background on evolution and biodiversity makes us more sensitive of our environment, our home. Therefore, the safekeeping of this home is in our hands. I have learned that our body is made up of different systems that coordinate with one another in order to perform their respective functions or tasks. I also realize that all of us is unique. Even though we share some characteristics with our peers and our family members, every one of us has a unique combination of traits to prevent the well-known and well-documented problems of genetic defects caused by inbreeding, I discovered that species need a variety of genes to ensure successful survival. Without this, the chances of extinction increase. The last thing I learned in this unit regarding the ecosystem is that humans are obliged to take responsibility in maintaining a clean and healthy state of the ecosystem. This whole third quarter taught me a lot about living things. The systems that run our body are linked to each other. In addition to this, ultimately every living thing can chase its ancestry to a bacterium that lived billions of years ago. Physically, the human body seems to have changed very little in the last 50,000 years. However, improvements in diets, increased lifespan, and developments in biotechnology may start to speed up the evolutionary process. And the last topic is biodiversity. Changes in ocean temperature, length of seasons, and amount of precipitation are all factors that affect the level of biodiversity. And about 0.1% of species are lost each year.
There are many things that I have learned in this quarter, but the main objective of these things is to tell or inform how our body and our environment work, whether it is the nervous system which processes information, endocrine system which is made up of glands that secretes hormones, or the reproductive system that is responsible for our reproduction and survival. These systems work together and make our body fully functional every day. I have also learned that we have a common material that we share and it's called DNA. Every day, humans develop and change according to how they live or the environment around them. In short, we are evolving every day and this is what makes us different from other creatures. What I have learned from this quarter is mainly about how our human body works. This system are linked together and coordinates its functions so that our body will maintain in well-balanced form. Not only that I learned about the systems of the body, I also gained awareness on how our genetics works. And that is, and it is associated with genes, genetic variation, and heredity in living organisms. Genes can also be from parent to offspring and it is called inheritance. Evolution is the change of heritable characteristics that leads to biodiversity. The environment is indeed peculiar. It's ingenious design from the scenery up to the intricate engineering of the living bodies. At first, I thought the nervous system is only composed of solely nerves, veins, arteries, and capillaries. That the endocrine system is only hormonal work and the productive system is all about making babies. We are genetically inscribed. That, surprisingly, we share 50% same DNA with bananas. Thanks to evolution, our turkey during Thanksgiving isn't the size of a bulldozer. That living things are classified using the mnemonic, Dear King Philip, come over for good spaghetti. I am also happy that my motherland is rich in biodiversity and belongs to the 17 mega diverse countries. But due to rapid industrialization and exponential growth of population, our biodiversity is currently the shortness of breath I'll explain How rare and beautiful it truly is that we exist. Yeah, you know,